the word was there. The word is Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit was on waters. He was on top of waters. And the God, the Father, was there too. And then, God to be there, that is his presence. And again, where the presence of God is, everything is possible. Everything is be okay. Everything you shall ask him is going to give is to you. Because our God, our God's presence is a powerful thing. And in each situation, know that God is with you. Amen. You will get through any circumstances, Amen. any hindrance, Amen. any blockage, Amen. anything that can put you away from the presence of God. Amen. Call upon the name of God. Amen. And you are going to see everything is going to be possible. Amen. And again, whenever the presence of God is with you, you are a conqueror. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What is the presence of God? The presence of God is when God is revealed to us. And his work is manifested in us. That is the presence of God. What is it? It is, it is when God is revealed. Revealed to us. And again, when the work of God is manifested in us. But, oh, I'm sorry, I want to keep going to Swahili. I want to say, what does he feel? That is praise God. <laughs> yeah, you have to know Swahili too. Because Swahili became international language. Yeah. So, that's what I'm saying that it is when God is revealed to us, when God is fighting for you, when God is healing you, when God is elevating you, when God is giving you whatever you want Him to give to you, that is how God is revealed to us. And again, when His work is manifested in us, it's when, because whenever we receive from God, we have to give to God too. We gave our offering here. Sometimes, we sacrifice our lives to God because he's, He revealed Himself to us and because of the work that He did for us, we have to manifest also something in giving Him back to Him. Hallelujah. Amen. And for this, that is a definition of the presence of God. Whenever God gives you something, He gives you gifts. And whenever He gives you gifts, you have to do something because of that gift that he gave to you. And sometimes other people, they are compared to that servant who got one talent and they put it under the ground. And they said, my, my chief, my boss is a wicked man. Let me put this thing under the ground. And whenever you put the, your gift under the ground, you are not the work of God is not manifested in you. You have to do something. And whenever you do something, God is going to bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. The second point, the third, the third point is, what does the presence of God do to us? What does the presence of God do to us? A. The presence of God defeats our enemies. Amen. You know, whenever we are in the presence of God, whenever we are called the child of God, Satan, witches, free nations, the people of darkness, they are after us every time. And they want us to quit to serve God so that they can choose our mind, choose our behavior, choose everything in us so that we can be in darkness. But we are lucky. Because we have the light. Amen. And our light is Jesus Christ. Amen. Whenever Jesus Christ is in us, the light is shining 
upon us, the light is shining in us, and everybody is going to see, see Jesus through us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Last week, I went somewhere. I went to work somewhere because I do own care. I help people with disabilities. And then I got a new work, a new job. I went there to see the man of that boy. And when I went to see the man of that boy, we were talking in her house, talking about the job and whatever. And all of a sudden, that man asked me a question. I, he asked me, she asked me, so, oh, are you a minister of God? I was like, oh my God, how come? How come are you asking me that question? Because I see some, I see something in you. That's what he told me, she told me. We never met. That one was it. the first day we met. And then she said, I see something in you. You must be a minister of God. And I told her, you are right. I am the minister of God. I said, I say, that's what I, we have to do. Our enemies, whenever they come to us, they know that we are children of God. And they know that we have something different from them. They have to attack us. They have to attack our families. In 2007, when I was still in Kenya, God told me something. He, he told me this. He said, Satan witches, they were coming to church. But because of the prayers of the saints, they were like bounds. Because of the power of God, by the presence of God, and then they say, because of that, we are going to go out of the church. But we are going to attack the families. Whenever we get the family, we have the church. Because whenever there is conflict between the mom and the father and the children, there is confusion. Even though you can come to the church, even anybody can preach, you cannot understand anything. Because where you are coming from, there is no peace. That is that is a target of God, of, of Satan. But whenever we are in the presence of God, whenever he comes in one way, he's going to flee away from you and me in seven ways. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, you can see in Matthew 3, 6, 33, the Bible says, seek first. What? The kingdom of God. And the other thing. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the word of God. And they were our enemies. Whenever they come to, to us, whenever God fights for us, we are becoming conquerors. Remember Daniel. Daniel, because of the presence of God, because of God, they wanted to kill him. And they put him in lion den. So that the lions, they can devour, devour him. But because of the presence of God, let me tell you, he was in the lion den. He was sleeping like a baby. Amen. Every corner, every corner, his pillow was lions. That was his pillow. But let me tell you, because of that, the lions, they knew that God gave, gave them Daniel. Daniel, for so many lions, it's like nothing. And the lions say, no, God, we don't want this. We don't want this guy. We don't want him. We give him back to you. But let me tell you, our enemies, whenever they're coming to attack us or to kill us or to finish us, God is going to destroy them Amen. because of his presence. Hallelujah. Amen. And then those people were how many? Do you know? There were 120 people who were against Daniel because he refused to bow down before the statue, statue that king said everybody is going to bow before it. He said no. I have to bow only in presence of God, but not in presence of any statute. 
Hallelujah. Amen. And then they took all of them, 120, and their families, and then they threw them in the lion den. And every, the lion were like in a party. They were in a, in a party. They were eating, eating, eating because they gave only one person to God. And God gave them, gave them many, many, many people to eat. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is in your life. Whoever is going to attack you, he's going to fight Jesus first. Yes. Because you're going to cover, you're going to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because the blood of Jesus is our sanctification. The blood of Jesus is like our protection. The blood of Jesus, it is our life. Hallelujah. Amen. And for that, Satan is, cannot uh, defeat you because you are in the presence of God. Every time Satan or his people are against you, don't run and go to the witch doctors. No. Don't run to your father. No. Don't run to your wife. No. Don't run to your, your, your wife. No. But run to the presence of God. Whenever you run to the presence of God, you are going to be protected and nothing can happen to you which is going to be bad. Remember, Saul and David. Saul was pursuing David. He wanted to kill him. And one day, he was singing. He was singing. He was singing. And then Saul took the sword and threw it to, to David. And David escaped it and went to the wall. David see, if I, I stay here, I'm going to die. Let me, let me flee away and go where I'm going to be in the presence of God. It's when David went where? To Nayat. Nayat is where the children of prophet were prophesying. It was like a mountain. They go there to pray and they were prophesying. Because of the presence of God. David, when he got to the mountain, he started prophesying, prophesying, prophesying. And the enemy knew that David went to Nioth. He pursued him there. Let me tell you, whenever the presence of God is, whenever you are and the presence of God is where you are, the enemy, when he's going to come there, his mind is going to be changed. The mind is going to be changed. His tactics is going to be changed. He's going to be like a nothing. And when the soul stepped his foot on that mountain, instead of coming and killing David, he started waiting for a sign. And then you see the king. The king is a guy who is like a head of honor to everybody. Everybody, whenever he sees him, he sees this is the king. But let me tell you, when he got to the mountain, he was not walking, but he was going with his knees, prophesying, even though he's a king. Let me tell you, in the presence of God, the God does not see your qualifications, your studies, your status, your money, your whatever you have. God does not want that. Whenever the presence of God comes out, everybody is nothing. Because the presence of God has power. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The first point is, in the presence of God, miracles and wonders are working. Miracles and wonders are working when the presence of God is in our midst. That's why we see, whenever we are get church, wherever, whenever we are somewhere listening to the word of God, I know God manifest himself. Some people are getting healed. Some people are getting delivered. Some people are getting elevated. Our people are getting everything that they want because the presence of God is moving around his people. Amen. Amen. We see Joshua. Joshua, the servant of God, the one who came, who came after Moses. One day, they wanted to go and they cross the Jordan River. 
and he was there with the people. But he asked God, how come we are going across this river? But God told him, don't worry, my presence is going to be, we're going to go with you. And the presence of God were, were where? Was where? The presence of God was in the ark of covenant. That where the presence of God was. And the God told Joshua, take four priests, two in front and two at the back, and tell them to take the ark of covenant and go and put their feet in the water. And then those priests went and do so. And whenever they did so, the Bible says the waters, they got the way, the way to cross that river. Hallelujah. Amen. And today God is going to help you to cross your boundaries. Amen. To cross your enemies. Amen. To cross everything that is like a burden in it to your life. Amen. God is going to help you to cross that river. Amen. The river of Jordan in Jesus name. Amen. Remember again. Elisha. Elisha the servant of God. He went to a woman at Sarepta. And when he got there, that mom, it was like a famine was in that country. And that mom, he was a, she was a widow with one son. They have a small food that they are going to eat that day and maybe tomorrow they die. And then the servant of God came inside there. Let me tell you. You see this guy here. You see him because you know him. But you don't know what is inside him. Because of him, you can pursue so many stuff in your life. Because of him, you can go beyond your limitation because of his prayers, because of his counseling, because of whatever he can do for you. Because whenever you have the father, spiritual father, every time God gives him something to give to his people. Hallelujah. Amen. And then Elisha, when he got to that, that lady, the lady said, Elisha said, oh, I'm give you food. The lady said, you know, well now we have a small food with my, my boy. We are going to eat and tomorrow we are going to die. So I don't know what to do. He said, give me food. The lady said, oh my God, how come? But, okay, let me give you, I'm going to give you my food and then maybe tomorrow we are going to die. But let me tell you, give whatever you have to God. And God is going to open doors for you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I remember, I was watching something on TV. And the preacher prayed for somebody. And when he was preaching, he said, everybody switch off your phone. And there is a guy who was in the church. And then that guy said, for God to switch off his phone. And after that, there is a guy who, who has debt or, or who, had, who owned his money. And then for three years, whenever he asked the money for that guy, oh, wait, wait, wait. But because he forgot. And that day, let me say, he didn't get, have anything to offer to God. I said, God, you know, I don't, I don't have anything to offer to you, but you know my situation. But let me tell you, because he forgot to switch off his phone, he had a message get into his, his, uh, his phone. And then, when he opened the, the phone, he saw the guy. The guy sent that, that money to him. It was a lot of money. And then uh, he, went, he, he wrote a pledge. He said, okay, I'm going to give to God this amount of money. And, uh, after the second day, that gay guy came to testify. I'm coming to testify because last, last, last night, the preacher said to switch off the phone, but I didn't, I forgot. But because of forgetting, God gave me something to offer to him. That's what I'm saying. You have to offer to God and leave the rest to him because he's the one who knows everything. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, so when that lady came to him that food, after some minutes, that guy told him, Elisha told the woman, go all over, bring every pot that you have, 
and report that you have. Go to neighbors, ask them and put, bring them here. And he said, put something, a little, maybe, maybe the dot, some dots in each, each, each of these, of these veils. And the lady did them. And let me tell you, all of those veils were full of oil. And that lady went to sell them and he, be, he continued to live because of the presence of God. Whenever the man of God is, there is the presence of God. Whenever you are, there is the presence of God. If you are connected with him. If you are not connected with him, let me tell you, you are not going to see the presence of God. But today, if you connect yourself to God, God is going to help you and then you are going to see your life is going to change. Amen. 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 So, again, we remember, we know that uh, the dead are ex uh, resurrected whenever the presence of God is. Remember Jesus when he went to Jairus because of his daughter. His daughter died. But uh, Jesus resurrected him. Remember Paul when he was preaching there's a guy who was sitting on the on the window and he fell asleep and he, and he went down and he died. And he took us. And the Paul went there because of the presence of God. He prayed for him and the guy, God, God God became alive again. And that one said because of the presence of God. I remember one day, one day we went to preach somewhere. And when we went to preach somewhere, we found a guy, a, a, a girl. That girl had something on her feet. She was uh, like walking like somebody who broke her, her leg. It was because he had some pimple on her, on her foot. And when he scratched it, and it, it became big. And it, was, it became like a cancer. And uh, when I was looking at that girl passing by, passing by, I tell God, I need your presence. I need you when I'm going to pray for this lady. I want her to get healed. And then one day, they call us, saying, okay, this lady, he, she's uh, having a severe, a severe pain, a severe heat in her body, fever, fever in her body. Come and pray for her, for her. I say, God, this is the time now. I want the presence. I want you to manifest yourself. And then we went there. She was like shivering, shivering. She was walking with, with a stick now. The stick. But when she was on the bed, the bed was like shaking, shaking, shaking the bed because of the fever. And then, after that, we prayed for that girl. 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 And the shaking stopped. And after the shaking stopped, and I saw her like there is changes in her life. I told her, sit down. She sat down. And after sitting down, I told her, come out of the bed. And she came out of the bed and she was looking for the stick to stand up. Because she could not stand without the stick. And the one she was there wanted to stand up, she took the stick. And uh, she tried, she thought maybe it's going to be the same, like every day. And whenever she took the stick and she wanted to put that leg on the ground, she felt like, ah, it's not paining again. She put the stick out, but she threw it away. And then she started walking. Hallelujah. And she got it because of the presence of God. Hallelujah. That's what I'm telling you, whenever the presence of God, there is healing. The presence of God, there is resurrection. The, the presence of God, everything is possible. Nothing can be like obstacle whenever the presence of God is in our midst. And today, God is going to help you and you are going to see something in your life. Amen. You are going to see changes in your life Amen. because of the presence of God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And today, it is your day. Amen. Your day today. Amen. You see the presence of God. Amen. Because of the presence of God is going to be in your life today. Amen. Let me give you a secret because of the presence of God. One, if you want to seek the presence of God, one, draw 
near to God. Amen. Somebody, can you read us for us James 4 8? Draw near to God. It means be near God. Whenever you are near God, you are going to see the presence of Him. Amen. Amen. So, maybe we can read all of us. We have it here. Draw. And he will draw nice to you. Place your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Uh -huh. You see, there is something there. We have draw near to God. One. The second two, second thing is He will draw near to you. Two. Three. Cleanse your hand. Uh -huh. You sinners. Three, purify your heart. Okay. Cleanse your hand. It's like whenever you are near God, you are going to fear sin. You are going to fear God because the fear of God is what? The beginning of wisdom. The second one, you sinners. Two, purify your heart. Purify your heart. To purify your heart is to live a sanctification life. That is to purify your heart, your heart. Sanctification. Every day you have to sanctify yourself to God. And God is going to be in your prayer or near by to you. He's going to be near to you. And then you double-minded. There is something. Double-minded. It's like you are praying on two, two places. You are to God when it's to God. You are to Satan when it is to Satan. You are in the church this morning because it's Sunday. But when you go to work, you are number one to insult people. You are number one to look down on people. But let me tell you, you have to be only one-minded. Minded, whenever you are one-minded to God, everything is going to be possible into your life. That's why you are praying. You are praying ears and ears, but God can never answer you because sometimes maybe you are double-minded. But draw near to God, and God is going to give you only one mind. Amen. And you are going to believe in Him. Amen. And you are going to seek His presence and God is going to be with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The second one. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. It says, You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah. Uh -huh. And uh, you shall seek me. The first one. Draw near to him first. And then you are going to seek him. Don't be there and, and stay like doing nothing. Seek him. And when you seek God, you are going to find him. Man. Because of what? You cleanse your hand. You purify your heart. And then whenever you seek him, you are going to find him. Amen. 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 So, and then... When you shall search for me with all your heart. When, they, when they were, okay, you search for me, it's when you live your sanctification life. Every time, whenever you are near to and whenever you are seeking God, God is answering your prayers. And God is going to do whatever you want Him to do to you. Amen. Amen. And uh, again, if you can see here, we said about our enemies. Our enemies, they are going to be distracted. They are going to be destroyed by God. God is going to shout them out from the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Thessalonians, second Thessalonians 1 9. Pastor, give me some of it. I don't want to go here. The time is done already. Oh, is that? Five more. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to finish on five minutes. I'm sorry. 
So, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? Is those are our enemies. That is the word that I'm giving to you today. Put this word into your head, into your heart every time. Know that God shall punish those enemies that are after you and then God is going to destroy them in your presence. And then God is going to give them more life. They are going to live long and see the blessing that the God is going to give unto you. Amen. Amen. And for this, you will see the presence of God. Your prayer for your need for so long, God is going to answer you today Amen. because you are not sometimes serious on what you are doing. Only the violent will be in the presence of God. Be violent so that you can be in the presence of God. Seek God with your heart and you are going to see Him. And how is your life now? Are you willing to be in the presence of God? Do something. There are some stuff that we cannot do without involving our spiritual father. Our spiritual father is here. There are some stuff that we cannot do. Remember 2 Kings 6 1. And you can do it now. It says about Elisha. The children of prophets. They told him, Oh Father, is this place is small? Like today, I want to tell you this place is small. You have to say, God, go to your spiritual father and tell him, Oh Father, this place is too small. Let us go somewhere and buy a land. Buy something so that you can be having a big place. And those children told Elisha, let us go to Jordan to cut off trees and come and expand this place. The man of God said, okay, it's okay. Go. Go and they cut those trees. But they said something. What did they say? They said this. Yes, we can go. But we cannot go or live without you. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't live without your father, spirit, spiritual father. Go with him every time. And God is going to open up something that you don't know. Remember, the axe went in the water. In our understanding, it's not possible. The axe that is, is heavy and go in deep of waters and but after, after some time it can flow on water. Is it possible? No. It's not possible. If the spirit of father didn't go with them, they could be in trouble. Mm. Because that guy borrowed that axe to go and cut trees. And the owner maybe could come after him. But because of the presence of the man of God, the presence of the father, spiritual father, everything came possible. And their access, acts flowed on the waters. And they took it and they gave to them. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us stand up and pray for one minute. I want you to prophesy. Because of the presence of God, you have to prophesy to your life. You are going to prophesy because of your family, your work, your job, everything that you want for God to do to you. You have to prophesy by yourself. And God is going to do it in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say, God, God, I'm coming before you. I'm, coming before I'm, you. I'm, prophesying, I'm prophesying for my life. For my life. Change my life. Change my life. Elevate my life. Elevate my life. Sanctify my life. Sanctify my life. Bless my life. Bless my life. Protect my family. Protect my, family. Protect my job. Protect my job. Protect my school. Protect my school. Protect my spiritual life. God, fight for me. God, fight for me. So that my enemy can go out of me in shame. So that my enemy can go out of me in shame. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank God now. Thank God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because of your Thank you, Jesus. Because you are our Lord and Savior.
Thank you, Jesus. Because of your presence. God, the heal the word of God. He's sick. Protect the word of God. He's in fight. Deliver whoever is bondage. In the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. In Jesus' name. 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 In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. You are God, body of my